All right, thank you for staying with us. It's News Hub, and uh, we are on a critical, uh, we're looking at a critical topic right about now, and that, of course, is in River State. I get, I understand, everyone will keep asking, what is it about River State and all of that? It's a democracy, and uh, when things are not going the way they ought to be, um, it beho behoves on us to uh, talk about this, to bring it up to public discourse and see how we can find a way out. As a matter of fact, just a short while ago, I was watching the response of OCJ, OCJ, Okocha to uh, Fubara, uh, you know, uh, the governor of River State, telling him outrightly that he is a legal luminary and not a so-called legal luminary, you know, the situation brewing in that state. So, Rivers politic, political crisis, anal analyzing the issues, any political solution in sight. It's a major question we are asking today. And joining us on this program today is Harry Ekene. He's a legal practitioner, public affairs analyst. He joins us all the way from River State. Uh, Mr. Harry, thank you for joining us. It's been such a long time. Yes, thank you for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure to join you this morning again. All right, then. So we have a situation where even OCJ Okoche, uh, I, I hope I'm correct, uh, pronounced Okocha, yes, Ocha. replied uh, the governor of River State, and he and uh, not a so-called legal luminary. I mean, is there ever going to be an end to the impasse, political impasse in River State? Uh, before we actually went on this break, Sean was asking the question, how is Fubara even coping with the issues of governance in River State? These are questions that are uh, flying through the minds of many Nigerians. What's your response, Harry? Uh, thank you. There surely will be an end to all of these unnecessary, avoidable, and orchestrated non-existent crises in River State. There would be an end, and I think the end is near. That's number one. Then number two, uh, with respect to the very senior Laird Silk, that is the senior advocate of Nigeria, OCG Okocha, the leader of the bar in River State, he is a legal luminary. I'm not sure that anybody is taking that away from him. And uh, as much as he has that very big cap on his head, then the expectations on him are also uh, very enormous to the extent that everybody in River State and outside River State would also expect that the uh, distinguished uh, senior advocate of Nigeria, Osijo Okocha, will give um, real leadership and direction with issues of law and governance in river states, even with the political position he has held. And so uh, perhaps when such comments are made, they are probably made from the point of view of um, how much has he probably fared in giving this direction, in uh, playing this possibly uh, mediatory role and also uh, giving a clear clarification to the issues of law. But it's, it's a fine gentleman, he's a respected legal luminary in real estate. Every one of us hold him to a high esteem, and I'm not sure that even the governor holds him any way lower. Then in terms of administration um, by, by, by the governor, His Excellency Seminalai Fubara, I, I would just say he, he has got, got uh, wisdom on him, I would believe, Otherwise, with a kind of um, avoidable crisis that had just been orchestrated, barely about six to eight months after his assumption of office could really distract any person who is not focused in administration. But I would say to you on national TV that River State mm. is on the track of um, um, administration and leadership on the part of the executive. The judiciary is working in River State. I would say that what is reported to be the crisis in River State is perhaps some form of um, leadership, um, 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 uh, if you like, struggle in the legislature. There is no contest as to who is the governor of River State. Yeah. Let's take this very clearly. The time yeah. the governor had his own challenges, his legal challenges, when was when he was before the tribunal. After the election, he had matters in the tribunal. He was victorious. He got on the Court of Appeal, got on the Supreme Court. So the executive arm, the governor has no problem, and he's, he's giving leadership in River State. And I think administration, excellent uh, projects, infrastructure, um, um, rehabilitation is going on. It is in the River State House of Assembly. And I dare say, Section 90 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria established just one House of Assembly for each of the 36 states, hmm. just as it is in River State. So we have one River State House of Assembly. And the same Constitution provides for the seat of a speaker to be elected by the members of the House. 
So we have had a that was elected in May or sometime in June, and the House was convened in June. And then that speaker never had any problem. He was the speaker. He wasn't even impeached. That is uh, Right Honorable uh, Martin Amewule. Until sometime in December, he decided to leave the House. And he left the House with a disturbing, worrisome number of other legislators, 26 of them. So together with him, there are 27. I, I just say, my brother, that it appears this is a bit novel in not just political development in Nigeria, but to my study of political science and law, I am not mm. sure I've read and come across such development anywhere in any legislature in the world where this huge number, more than about 97, 98% of the membership of a legislative house leaving the house. So that's why it appears that many don't seem to understand, even lawyers. Uh -huh. even all, senior right. lawyers uh, uh, Harry, Harry, so that we don't... Like, Harry, sorry to interject. Harry, sorry, sorry to interject. So just so we don't uh, misrepresent the situation the way it is, we are aware of the fact that there is a judgment by the... Okay, to bring you, if you can, if you, if you can, if you, if you can hear me, Henry, uh, let me take you to where he was actually headed uh, with regards to the fact that right now, uh, there's no gain saying that people are saying that the house, uh, the state house of assembly in, in, in River State is polarized. There's, everybody knows that. I mean, saying that it's just one house, I would say maybe that's not the new real representation of what it is. Now let's go to what is going on. Uh, where the house now that the, the governor really represents, uh, really is talking about uh, enacting, uh, activating the uh, this constitution of the, the 1999 constitution, that's section 99 of the constitution too, really uh, press on INEC to conduct elections into the seats of the lawmakers that are affected to the APC. I remember that these 24 lawmakers are saying that they still have their seats in place. What impact is this having on, uh, you know, governors in River State? That's the big question that we have on the show today. Uh, we will connect with Harry Akina in just a moment. I think he's with us now. Okay. Harry, so nice to have you back on the program. Sorry for that. I mean, the glitch this morning. Thank you. I mean, thank God you're back with us. I was saying so that like, anyone who says that the house, uh, the state house of assembly in River State is not polarized may not just be saying the actual fact. We know what is going on is open. The whole world is watching what's going on in River State. But the big question and uh, what Nigerians are really itchy to know what's going on at the moment is, is really uh, as a Vita Oko uh, led, uh, you know, uh, state has been, of, of assembly, is they really willing to go ahead and press for an election to fill up the vacant, now quote unquote, seats of the lawmakers that defected from the PDP to the APC in the state. And that's another discussion because the team, the, the, the group also has something to say in that regard. Yes, let, let me, let me uh, state one clear fact here. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is clear as to how uh, vacant positions in the legislative house will be filled. And apparently it is by election. And that election is to be conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission established under Section 153 of the Constitution. It is not the responsibility of legislators in the legislative house. That is, that is the challenge we have in River State. If it were a situation that the remaining members of the House of Assembly can by themselves appoint successors to legislators who have left office from the constituencies they represented, of course, we wouldn't have had this situation. We would have had a situation where Victor Okojombo and the other members of the House of Assembly who are remaining legitimately so would have just nominated members of the constituencies that those 27 members left and then judge or someone swearing them in. But it's not like that in the legislature, in our constitution. Compare that to the executive. In the case of the executive, if a governor dies or for any reason that position becomes vacant, the deputy governor automatically becomes the governor because they were both elected. That deputy governor, upon becoming governor, will nominate it. another person to be deputy governor will be sworn in. But in the legislature, it has to be election. That is why in River State, when 27 members left on their own, and apparently that's the position of the constitution, that's the implication of their defection. Forget about whatever political interpretations 
and if you like, misconstruction that anybody would give of a political interest, even the judiciary. I must say, even if I'm a lawyer, but I, I accept the judiciary here because this matter has not clearly been given a definitive determination in any court, particularly the issue of defection and the effect of that defection. So now, uh, Okojombo and the remaining members have further requested INEC to conduct that election. Recall that sometime in December 2023, Martin Amiwile and his 26 other former colleagues left the University as for Assembly by their own action. And by that, the seats were subsequently declared vacant by the Speaker of the House. Edison here was uh, uh, later elected by other legislators who were left as members of the University House for Assembly. And as the Speaker, pursuant to the provision of the Constitution, he declared those seats vacant and wrote INEC to conduct election immediately and not later than 90 days. So the question Nigerians should be asking INEC is why didn't they conduct the election more than even 90 days after the, the vacation of those members from the House? So when, when subsequently, even the Edis Nehe assumed an executive position, and in our constitution, once a legislative member assumes executive position or is appointed any, into any executive office, he automatically loses his seat. So Edis Nehe lost like his seat in to, the assembly. Just, just wait a little bit. I'd like to interject here, and that's the essence of this program today, all right? If indeed the man that's now been recognized by the governor to be in charge of the state house of assembly, that Victor Okujumbo, so sorry, is indeed being recognized by the governor, please. He is the legitimate member, uh, speaker of the universal house of assembly. By okay, the all right. Okay, okay. That's the way it is, right. Mm -hmm. But now, if he's in charge, and INEC is expected to conduct by election since December, and INEC is yet to do that, we are already in October 2024. What does this mean to the river people? I mean, you are a lawyer. If INEC is not conducting an election to fill vacant seats, and those people that occupy the seats are still referring to themselves as lawmakers, then what is going on in River State? It's unfortunate, a very unfortunate situation in River State. I think River State deliberately made to be a victim of a sort, and all of us, especially the constituents of those... Uh, 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 constituencies, the entire state anyway, are, are, are deliberately made uh, some sort of victims in, in some political, um, orchest politically orchest orchestrated um, crisis. Now, but what, what is left is for the judiciary to be firm and upright. Let me tell you, my dear, the, the, the House of Assembly had done what the constitutional uh, provisions had vested in the Speaker to do to communicate INEC about the vacant positions and request for elections to be conducted. Rivers, indigenous, and residents have impressed on INEC to do the needful. INEC has refused to do so. The judiciary has, I can say here, deliberately shied away, stayed away, gone the roundabout way to avoid the critical central issue as to the defection of the 27 former law members, uh, lawmakers in Rivers House Assembly and the effect of that clear defection. I tell you that the decisions of various courts that have been celebrated, including even the decision of the Court of Appeal that upheld the decision of Justice Somoto Show in the Federal High Court, are not matters directly on this issue. I have taken time to explain this clearly. And just in one minute, I will do again. Matilda Mayweather came as speaker sometime in November. That time he had not resigned from the House. Sometime in November of 2023, approached the Federal High Court in Abuja that he was afraid that the executive arm of the government of River State was going to go to the National Assembly and request National Assembly to take over the proceedings of the University House of Assembly. That was the crux of the matter before just Photoshop. People who don't want to investigate, that is the crux of the matter. And when Omotoshow reviewed that application, or rather that process, and especially when the governor and other defenders withdrew their defense, judgment was entered, meaning that the purpose of that judgment is to the effect that, remember, that time, that time, Martin and Ulla and six members had not affected the that election on the list of the So even if the Court of Appeal reviewing the decision of a motor show, All right, the next work. All right, unfortunately, we... In a matter that was instituted on the night of could not have originally been the issue could not have been the substantive matter
to address the issue of defection and then the effect of defection on we apologize. The network isn't friendly at all. I mean, the word's not coherent anymore. We know uh, the line of thought that you are applying, but then uh, not clear enough. Andona, uh, I know that we have just about two more minutes on this segment. Let's see if we can get some, uh, you know, closure here and there from Mr. Ekine till another time. Uh, what many Nigerians are asking is, River State has been in the news. I can't remember in the last four years. Maybe even eight years, maybe maybe ten years, when River State had not been in the news constantly, uh, for whatever reasons, you know, across those times. But then in this situation where there's a sitting governor, the State House of Assembly does not have its full complement of representatives uh, from the local governments across the state, and which some people would argue is really denying the people of River States the dividends of democracy which they deserve. Uh, Mr. Henry Akine, in closing, we have to go in just one minute. What do you see to be the way forward at this point in time? Is Governor Fubara really uh, in charge of all of these? And do you think that INEC indeed would go ahead to conduct the by-election? From what you can see, you are in River State already. Well, I, I think the way forward is for everybody to call on INEC to perform their statutory and constitutional duty of conducting election. Uh, that's number one. Then number two, for the judiciary, those judges that are entertaining the matters that were directly on the issue of defection and the effect of defection should come up with decisions. Let us know one way or the other. I said here just slightly, and I'll close by this, that the day the judiciary and those judges that are entertaining matters that are before them to the effect that, hey, X, Y, Z persons have clearly defected from the political party that sponsored them into the River State House Assembly and have announced that denunciation and their membership of another political party, then up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court has already given a direction in this regard that once that happened, that person has automatically lost his position in that house. The decisions are there. You don't even need a court to make a pronouncement. It is automatic by the provisions of the Constitution. What would happen usually is that in the in event that anybody defected, the leadership of that house, the speaker, or the senior president, or the speaker of the House of Representatives, does that declaration of the seat vacant, calls on either to conduct election. If the defector feels dissatisfied with that declaration of his seat vacant by the leadership of that house, it is he that will go to court and say the, the, the reason it defected was justified. It is that that the court will review. But unfortunately, I know of one, two, three matters that are before the court. Okay. And shy the way. Some will just go on the primary way and dismiss. Thank, thank you, Harry Akina. We have to go. We have to go. We thank you indeed. It's always a pleasure to have your perspective on things happening, especially in your state, reverse state. We thank you indeed. I will look forward to having you again. All right, you still watching News Hub on Silverbird Television. Now, the Libyan presidential election had originally been planned uh, for 10th of December 2018. Then it didn't hold. Right now, in 2024, a lot of things have been expected to happen in the country. I'm just trying to build up to the electoral pattern that the country, the North African country, had witnessed in the last uh, few years, maybe 12 years, and the way the country is headed. One of the all producing countries of the world, an OPEC, uh, you know, member of OPEC, so to speak. What's happening in the country? How's the politics going? What about the economy? How are the people faring since uh, the death of uh, Gaddafi, who wanted to take a look at Libya as we travel around the world within waters, who's present in Ukraine, keep to be precise after this break. Just stay with us. <laughs>